Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful Today channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Bill returns home and attempts to counsel Liam in the administrative office at Forrester Creations, RG was visibly angry upon learning that Steffi had over and left for Europe. Ridge and Brooke were inversely worried that Sheila had set up a way to disrupt everyone's lives. Ridge suggested that he inform Eric about what was going on with Steffi. Ridge fooled that Eric had been really lucid of late, and he wondered if anyone differently had noticed. Mentioned that he'd spoken with Eric and was upset about him. Ridge bothered that commodity was wrong with Eric. RG backpedaled a bit and brought up the new line that Eric wanted to produce. Ridge cut off his son and said that Eric's idea to launch a new line in the middle of the season was a terrible idea. Did not like that Ridge was being dismissive to someone as vital and able as Eric. Brooke stepped between the two men and suggested that Eric merited to relax and enjoy life and the fruits of his numerous times of labor. Latterly, Rook told Ridge that Urjay's concern for Steffi and Eric proved that they had done a good job as parents. Ridge bothered that there was further to what Urjay had said than met the eye. Ridge praised Brooke's tang for life and wished that Eric could be more like her. As Brooke got back to work, Ridge gobbled off and imagined Eric sitting at his office. At the Forester manse, Eric plotted to sketch a design. Archie showed up and was pleased to see Eric working. Eric growls that he had not been suitable to do much and that he'd forgotten the word to the tablet that RJ had given him. RG beamed astronomically and presented Eric with a tablet of his own. RG pledged to be with Eric every step of the way and help him launch his new line. Eric said his incapability to use his hand had enough important and did any chance of his line coming to consummation. You can still walk. You can still talk. You can still play the piano. God knows you can knock back the Martinez Thorge replied. RG called the new line Eric's Everest, a reference to the world's altitudinous mountain. Unlike others, RG said, Eric had formerly gauged the proverbial Everest. Let's take those ideas and bring them to life, together, RG said encouragingly. Eric thanked his grandson with grasp. Lee paid Finn a visit at the sand house to console him over Steffi and the kitties leaving. She lumbered her misprision for the way that Sheila had obtruded in Finn's marriage. Finn explained that Steffi had been ready to return home until Sheila had shown up suddenly. Finn broke for a moment before noting that Liam was also a trouble to Finn's marriage. Lai wondered if Liam saw Finn and Steffi's connubial straits as an occasion for himself. Rather than addressing what Liam might be allowing, Finn forcefully stated, Steffi and Iva family, we erected a life, she's my woman. Lai raised her support for Finn and Steffi's union. Does he have no honor? Lee snapped. Lee promised that she'd not allow Liam to break up Finn's marriage and family. At Spencer Publications, Liam ate Bill back from his trip. Bill apologized for being down while Liam's marriage had putatively been falling piecemeal. Bill wondered if there was any chance that Liam could forgive Hope. Liam admitted that he'd always love Hope, but he couldn't get past the fact that Hope had kissed Thomas. Wyatt, who had been substantially quiet, fitted that Thomas was not the only factor, there was also another woman that Liam loved. Bill claimed to understand Liam's passions for Steffi and vaguely insinuated that he'd been, or was still in, an analogous situation. Bill expressed his frustration that his charge to put Sheila in jail had been ruled unconstitutional by a judge. Liam claimed that he'd no way set out to break up Finn and Steffi. Wyatt reassuringly said that Liam had nothing to feel bad about. Still, Liam did not deny that he would be okay with Finn and Steffi's marriage ending. I'd be a fool not to jump at another chance with her if it came up because I do love Steffi, Liam said vocally. Finn arbiters a standoff between Sheila and Steffi at the precipice house. Steffi shocked, certain that Sheila was outside the house. Finn said to decelerate down, and Steffi asked if he allowed. She was seeing effects. Finn hopped up and went onto the yard. He spotted Sheila lurking around and asked what she was doing there. Sheila said she would have to see him, and she would miss her son. Finn said Sheila was coming with him. Steffi called out for Finn. He said he was okay, and he'd Sheila. Steffi frenetically glanced around the house, and she was stupefied when Finn dragged Sheila into the house through the kitchen. Finn asserted that they'd put an end to it right also, formerly and for all. 
Sheila started talking about Finn in terms of her son. Steffi said to stop saying that. Refusing, Sheila said it was true, and Steffi should understand it. Sheila claimed that nothing could change it. Sheila told Finn that she did not want to be get in trouble. She just could not stop allowing of the recollections they participated lately. She said he would embrace her again and again, and they'd had a deep connection. Knowing that she was right, Sheila asked him to tell Steffi. Not wanting to hear any further from Sheila, Steffi said she did not indeed know why the woman was there. He just told you, Sheila replied, on board with settling effects as Finn had said. Sheila wanted to move on as a family. Steffi asked what Sheila was talking about. Sheila doubled down on it, saying they were indeed a family. Steffi, who did not watch if Sheila had produced Finn, ordered Finn to tell Sheila she would no way be part of their family. Sheila admitted that she would make miscalculations that she would lame it ever, but she claimed that she was not evil. She asked if it had meant anything that she would save Kelly's life. Sheila asked for the chance to show that she would change and could be a nurturing mama, a good part of their lives. She asked Finn not to turn his reverse on her. Steffi instructed Finn to say he wanted nothing to do with the monstrous Sheila. Finn jounced and turned to Sheila. Claiming she was not a monster, Sheila contended with Finn not to turn his reverse on her. She said she could see it in his eyes that they had a connection, and they were more such-like than you realized. Sheila said that despite his parents' nurturing, he would still wondered about her. She recalled that he would had a desire to know his birth mama. Calling it a visceral connection, Sheila claimed to know all about it. She said she would been his first love, home, his first everything. The same blood coursed through their modes, and they had the chance to be together again. She asked him not to turn his reverse on his mama. At Spencer, Ridge and Liam bandied their fears about Steffi moving back to the precipice house. Liam claimed that Finn had a soft spot for his bio mom, and commodity bad would be. Ridge questioned why Liam allowed. It was necessary to express his passions about it all to Ridge. Liam said he was not trying to alarm Ridge who loved his son. Ridge assumed Liam allowed. It was nearly as important of a problem as Ridge did. Liam said it was about Steffi's safety. He claimed that Finn was an attraction for Sheila and the family was not safe with him. Ridge wondered how important of Liam's concern was grounded on this recently discovered love Liam had for Steffi. Ridge wondered how important it would change if effects between Liam and Hope were different. Liam replied that it was a valid question that Ridge merited an answer to. Liam explained that his concern was motivated by his love for Steffi, not born of a plot to break up her marriage. Ridge was glad to hear it. Liam wanted to figure out how to cover their daughters. Ridge asked if Liam knew the story of Steffi breaking her arm as a child. Liam said Steffi had allowed. She could fly. Ridge explained that they'd rented a house in Greece. He would seen Steffi near the escarpments as her siblings had watched her. He would gone outdoors and advised Steffi down from the escarpments, but the determined Steffi had claimed upon proving that she could fly. Steffi had jumped off the precipice and broken her arm. It had tutored Ridge that she could not fly, but if challenged, she would defy him. Ridge had always wondered if Steffi would have jumped if he had not pushed her. He said he and Liam could not push her because it would make effects worse. Liam did not suppose he could do it. Ridge replied that they had no choice because Steffi believed that she was right and wanted to reunite her family. Ridge was certain that if they pushed her, she would jump and try to fly down. Lion was upset because it was Sheila who got relief of obstacles in her way. In the design office, RG looked at HFTF sketches and complimented Hope on how well it was doing and how important Forrester was investing in the line. He asked if she would shown Eric any of the sketches. Figuring Eric would love it, RG said he would detest to see Eric lost in the equivocation. Hope blatted that Eric was the face of Forrester. RJ asked if she allowed. Eric was just a statuette. Hope did not suppose that, but she did believe that all companies changed and grew. Right, with you and Thomas leading the way, RG murmured. Hope looked nonplussed and asked what RJ had been inferring. RG said he did not want the author to be forgotten. Averring that it was not passing, Hope asked if it was about that or about her and Thomas. Figured that since Hope had brought it up, he would express his concern. He was not interested in talking about Thomas. Rather, RJ asked if Hope was done with Liam or not. RJ said Hope did not have to talk about her implicit divorce, 
but Brooke had mentioned to him that Hope had fought for alternate chance for her marriage. Hope said she would wanted to make sure that she and Liam had done all they could do. She remarked upon the special birthday they'd had with Beth, which had been followed by a great talk about Thomas. Hope had felt as if Liam had wanted another chance at their marriage. She claimed she would put all the cards on the table, but Liam had shot her down. RG asked why Liam would lead her on. Hope asked if he would ever met Liam Spencer. Hope added that Liam loved her but could not forgive her. RG assumed Liam would if it had been any other man but Thomas. Hope jounced and paraded down from RJ. He figured she felt alone and lost. Hope flashed back to her last intimate hassle with Thomas. RG said it was illegal, and it was not like Liam had not heard her in the history. RG was sure Hope would get through it. Beaming, Hope agreed, figured it was hard to see easily, but Hope replied that she was seeing effects easily. He stated that he knew what she wanted happiness, love, and fulfillment. He said she also wanted to be a businesswoman and mama, but to achieve it, she had to put herself first. He asked her to close her eyes and suppose of someone who rounded her in those effects and would make her up and support her. Hope opened her eyes. He said he allowed. They knew the answer to it. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.